This microRNA have a number of targets. Okay? And then I thought, okay, BCL2 is clearly the driver, what it causes leukemia. But there are also, there could be other genes that are dysregulated and are upregulated because of the loss of this microRNA. We found another one, which is in the BCL2 family called MCL1. Now a lot of pharmaceutical companies are trying to make inhibitors of MCL1. And my talk today was about another target. Uh, some time ago, a collaborator of mine, uh, Tom Kipps, found an orphan receptor that he called ROR1, which is on the cell surface. It's an antigen on the cell surface. And uh, this antigen seemed to be expressed only in the leukemic cell and not uh, in the normal cell, in the normal lymphocyte. And that, that really bothered me. I say, why the hell this ROR1 is uh, expressed only in leukemic cell and not in the normal cell at all? For me, it did not make any sense. And then I asked Tom, Tom Kipp, look, Tom, I really don't believe it completely, okay? Are there some CLL which are ROR1 negative? And he confessed, yes, but only 10%. Okay? So I said, ah, oh, that's very interesting. So what you do now, you send me 20, 25 CLL, which are ROR1 positive, and 20, 25 CLL, which are ROR1 negative. So you get equal number of CLL, positive and negative. And I screened them for all microRNA, which are about 2,500. And you know what came out? That the difference between the one that were ROR positive and the one that were ROR negative were mere 15 and 16. In the end, uh, showing that in fact, the one that uh, where ROR1 positive are the ones that lost MIR15 and 16. And we found immediately after that ROR1 is a target of MIR15 and 16. So the loss of MIR15 and 16 in CLL lead to overexpression of BCL2 and MCL1, but also overexpression of ROR1. And then we look at hundreds of cases of CLL, finding that in fact the ones that are BCL2 positive are also ROR1 positive. But then we have another target that can be targeted with antibody. Okay? So with, in the case of CLL, we have already venetoclax, which is an anti-BCL2, small molecule that can be taken orally. Okay? But uh, I think that now it will be easy for us to make cytotoxic antibodies uh, against uh, error one. Okay? So one of the problems with targeted therapy, that when you have billions of cancer cells, there is always some variant, some mutant, which is resistant to therapy. And that's the problem. Because depending on how many of those cells there are, the therapy at some point becomes ineffective. But now, if you have the same genetic alteration, which is mere 15, 16 loss, that cause overexpression of BCL2, which is the driver, and overexpression of ROR1, that may be a driver, may not be, okay? Now, you can target BCL2, killing all the cells that uh, overexpress BCL2, and ROR1, all the cells that overexpress BCL2 will overexpress ROR1 too. So you will have two drugs killing the same cell independently of the, mecha of the uh, two mechanisms. Okay? So the probability that you will have a cancer cell that will survive therapy is zero. Okay? At least that is my prediction. So I think it's a phenomenal time. Okay? Uh, as you know, CLL is a very common disease. It's a relatively common disease. 
and it was incurable. I think now we have the opportunity not only to extend the life of, uh, and the quality of life of patients with CLL, I think that within a short time we will have the opportunity to cure most of them.